Why some people are very young at the age of 83 and others are old at the age of 20 already? What is the secret of being young at any age? Sometimes the situation in the world is changing and unstable. During these turbulent times, I want to have somebody as strong as a mountain by my side, as healing as water and unbreakable as metal. Julie Lewis is that person for me. The infectious, happy, healthy, beautiful, um, gorgeous. I can't put any words. Within a week that we were told that it was uh, cancer and it was stage four because it metastasized to the brain. I fought to live for her. Julie is now famous in the Middle East. She has become an author that is well known worldwide. She has led 61 expeditions around the globe to include the nine to the Arctic and three to the Antarctica. She has supported cancer survivors by motivating them and changing their lives. Yet, Julie has been through an experience that caused her to lose herself and then start living as bigger and better person. She loved her husband Hakim a lot, even though her family was concerned about her choice. Both of them liked sport, adventures, like winning. He was Egypt number one squash player for five years already. She drove to the club where Hakim was playing squash. I think it was initially shock, really, um, because I was totally unprepared for it. And, you know, whether somebody is having a long illness and then they pass or whether it's, you know, fast, I think it's still quite a shock uh, mentally and emotionally. And saw an ambulance outside. When she packed up and walked over to the squash courts, she saw Hakim on the floor with medics trying to bring him back to life. Hakim died at just 41 years of age. When you can get to the question instead of why me is what have I learned from this? What am I going to do with this? How could I help somebody else that maybe is experiencing loss of uh, you know, maybe a loss of identity, loss of a job, loss of uh, loss in any form. Julie cried a lot. She grieved every day. She wrote a journal to share with it about what happened to her. And one day she decided to go up. On the 7th of April 2002, I stood at the summit at 5.30 in the morning uh, with the kind of the rocky pose, you know, I'm on a mountain, I'm on a natural high. Mountain high, this is, you know, like I feel so alive. I see a, a different perspective. I feel strong. And I want more people to feel like this. You know, I really, and so the name, I'm on a mountain, I'm on a high, mountain high. I just thought this is what I need to do. A year later, I took a team of 18 women to Everest Base Camp in Nepal. And I challenge anybody to go to Nepal and not be impacted or changed or influenced. And I came back from Nepal in 2003. And that's when I had really the courage uh, to take a leap of faith and start Mountain High. Julie became strong and independent, but for her it was important to share her knowledge and power with other women and employees of big companies. She reached more than 20 mountains, one by one. Anytime you could close your eyes and, and go back to the mountains and feel that strength and that energy when you were you know, experiencing challenges at ground level, you know, so that any time you could become the mountain. Um, so I think that was very, very important. That was a significant turning point. Good morning from Hatter Fort Hill, Al Raha Pika, 893 feet. Nine years has passed. The last thing on Julie's mind was to be looking for love. Her life was filled with climbing mountains and other adventures. I wasn't particularly looking for another partner or a marriage. And I think, you know, when, uh, when the, what is it, when the student's ready, the teacher appears, or when the, when the person's ready. And um, I met Kaylin in 2006 at the Australian New Zealand Christmas Club dinner. And 
I'm from the UK and Kaylin's actually from Colorado. And the third date was caving. <laughs> we went caving in our lane and I thought if anybody's prepared to go down <laughs> a dark hole full of bats, um, then, you know, this is worth keeping and worth following. So I think it was that, that joie de vivre, that love of nature and that boldness and courageousness that, you know, really uh, was the chemistry, the catalyst. She's uh, what I call infectious. People always want to be around her. Um, they want to listen to her. They get inspired by her. I think the connection was really the love of mountains and the love of nature. You know, it was probably one of the first kind of guys that didn't say, well, what do you want to climb a mountain for? It was more like, when's your next mountain? She gives me confidence. She's putting, giving confidence to other women. Julie was swimming every day, and she put a very ambitious goal, to swim English Channel. When he arrived in the UK, I just thought this, something's really, really very different. You know, his whole social behavior, um, it was just very, it was very, very strange. I thought, this is not my husband, there's something really wrong. And I was concerned, was there something happened at work? Uh, had he met somebody else? They went to made a scan. The scan showed a tumor on the left frontal cortex. It was important to remove it as quickly as possible. Within a week that we were told that it was uh, cancer and it was stage four because it had metastasized to the brain. The doctors believed that there was no hope. Kellen, in his mind, had already surrendered to the disease. I thought I was a goner when I had my illness, um, stage four cancer. And uh, with Julie by my side, she was never gonna let me give up. Stage four and then stage five and then there's, that's it, end cancer. So we realized it was a very, very serious situation. Julie closed her eyes and pretended that everything will be all right. She was remembering mountains, adventures and marriage with Kellen on top of the mountain. They will live long. He cannot leave her. My goal was to be a mountain of strength for him and a beacon of light and to actually make sure that he was thinking, eating, moving as much as possible and, and sleeping well and knowing that he was totally loved and supported. They tried different types of medicine, from traditional medicine, meditations, to the newest forms of medicine and the best doctors. My therapy was going to swim in the sea. You know, I would leave the hospital, I'd uh, go home, I'd go and swim and swim and swim and wash the hospital and the, anything off me and then I'd come back and be recharged and go back smiling. Soon, even though it's hard to believe, the cancer went away and they're living happily. Either the power of the ocean or the mountains or Julie herself saved Kellen. I fought to live for her and all the adventures we're going to still have in the next 30 years. So uh, that, that was what I was living for. When I look at the mountains or swim in the sea, I feel that Julie is around me somewhere. I want to age like sea glass, smooth by tides, not broken. I want the currents of life to toss me around, shake me up, and leave me feeling washed clean. <laughs>